Hello YouTube, Alex here, back with some oxygen not included. Now, yes, this is actually the first video I've actually get, I've actually made of uh, this game here, and honestly, I have no idea if I'm going to continue with these sort of videos. But I'm just going to throw this one out here, as it is something, at least something different for the channel. And to be fair, I kind of need to find some different things. And as of late, I have been playing uh, a rather a lot of. Um, of this game, mostly because of the most recent updates and uh, various other things, and I mean, I've had I've had this game for so long, and it's only just recently it's like, oh, there's been like five million updates uh, since then. So I just thought, well, let's actually go back to the game and see what was going on, and it's a whole lot better than it uh, first was. I could tell you. Uh, and the thing is, with Oxygen Not Included, there's actually quite a few other YouTubers out there who have done this game to death and back. So really, I will just play this game a bit like. Uh, I do with Space Engineers, where if I can think of something that no one else has exactly, or I've got a really quirky and interesting way of maybe building a contraption uh, that I haven't seen anyone do per se, then I will probably make a video on it. That's kind of my logic. And getting more to the point here of what I'm on about, um, I've been messing around recently with uh, a machine a bit like this, and it's essentially a gas condensing unit. The thing, the thing that's um, really piqued my interest is just how easy it is to basically get liquid gas, although it depends what type of gas, in all fairness. You know, it, you could you could end up using those, uh, I, don't, I don't actually, uh, let me enable debug mode, if, uh, is it here? Yeah, you could often use these um, anti-entropy anti thermal nullifiers. Uh, you know, these things can even make solid gases uh, if you were so inclined. Uh, but, you know, in earlier games, this is kind of where I am I was making something like this, where it's a lot more easier to condense it. Because, like, gas in itself, like, gas takes up a lot of space, as you know. And, you know, it's just, you're trying to store all of that or dispose of certain gas, especially carbon dioxide up here, um, which is the biggest problem. Like, how do you deal with a massive buildup of gas? I mean, yes, you could probably even throw it into space if you uh, were so inclined, or... Just get loads and loads of uh, these containers, uh, gas cell gas reservoirs, yes. Uh, you get a lot of these and attempt to store all the gas that uh, you uh, need to store. But the problem is with that is they take up space. And in all fairness, the liquefying the gas, you can get significantly more of that liquid gas into a container uh, than you could to... Uh, try and use gas cylinders or even jettisoning it into space you know things like chlorine for example there's like there's always there's always chlorine chlorine is like bloody everywhere um so just condensing it into liquid form is just useful there and co2 well your damn duplicates here are always producing the bloody stuff and unless you want to have i mean you could have a carbon skimmer but like, believe me carbon skimmers they're very useful uh and especially they give you a, they give you a source of polluted water which if you had a, a slow evaporation pan you could actually get polluted oxygen and then polluted oxygen converted to regular oxygen. So um, I might actually do a, uh, might make a uh, polluted water evaporator, which is another contraption that I was messing around with, although I haven't done one just yet. Uh, but it gives you, it can basically give you oxygen pretty cheaply in terms of power and all that. This contraption does require a few a few uh, materials that will be a little bit difficult to get. Um, so this might be getting into a later game if you want to condense gases. Uh, but if you couldn't tell by just looking at it, this is obviously a, a vacuum flask system. As I'm true, I've not actually tried um, using, you know, insulating tiles to do this. But when you're dealing with, like, stupidly cold temperatures here, like the coolant alone is at negative 60 degrees here, you know, and what, what's the outside temperature? 22? You know, that's like over 80 degrees of thermal difference. So, trying to keep things cool and, you know, it just makes sense. Like, if you want to keep something cool, don't have anything touching it. So, this is kind of where the, the, the vacuum flask idea comes into mind here. Um, now, if you let me just actually get sort of a more in-depth as to what's going on here. It's actually incredibly simple. Literally, this one gas pump here runs the whole system. And if you couldn't tell, the cooling agent here are the slightly overpowered wheeze warts. Wheeze warts are just bloody amazing, to be honest. Uh, just cooling the air down just without really any effort at all. Um, which is obviously cooling down a, uh, a fair bit of hydrogen. I haven't exactly overpressurized this area. I think in this particular location, it's just under 3 kilos in mass here. You can also tell the wheeze warts have actually cooled the, air, the, the gas to such an extent they can't cool it anymore. So... 
you know, that is one thing here. I mean, it's a very simple thing, really. Weezwort cooldown hydrogen, which if I go to this system here, you can kind of see what's going on here. It, it, it's all in, it, you know, goes through insulated pipes and a bunch of radium pipes and a crisscross pattern. Uh, and now, because negative 60 degrees is cold enough, not only, as you can sort of see here, to liquefy carbon dioxide, it can also liquefy chlorine, because chlorine actually has a much, uh, I think it liquefies at like negative 60, no, no, negative, oh, no, negative 60, what am I about? About negative, um, 38 degrees, and, uh, CO2 is about negative 38, no, no, four, negative 48, why am I getting my numbers mixed up? Negative 48, roughly. Um, so you need more energy to cool down, uh, and liquefy CO2 than chlorine. Now, this particular setup works very well, because as you can see here, uh, the hydrogen coming into the uh, into the first cooling chamber is is negative sixty, which is about as cold as a wheeze wart or a bunch of wheeze warts. Only five of them, mind you, so not many of them. So five wheeze warts can do negative sixty degrees of hydrogen, which, mind you, this takes quite a few cycles uh, to pre-chill. But once you are down to temperature, you can start liquefying gases on a constant basis, like I'm doing here. Um, and it, so after it cools down the, um, the carbon dioxide, it moves over to the uh, chlorine here. Now it has warmed up a few degrees, negative uh, 57 degrees, so it's gone up by 3 degrees. But that is still cold enough to uh, flash condense, which I'm, I'm going to coin that term, because literally it's nearly the, in, like the instant, or the near instant, that this uh, gas comes in negative 18 degrees, so it's not too... Uh, not too, uh, you know, warm here. It pretty much, within about a couple of tiles, instantly just starts to condense uh, into a liquid here. Chlorine does take a longer amount of time. Now, this is actually where I would say that these, these are the smallest containers I would recommend using as a liquefying chamber. Um, for chlorine especially, because of its very poor thermal conductivity, I would recommend making the chlorine condensing chamber a lot taller, but about the same width. Five blocks in uh, width, but maybe double the height. Uh, as to double the height would give, uh, as the gas comes in from the top, it's going to be pulled down here because there's technically a vacuum here uh, where it's condensing into a liquid state. Uh, so it's being pulled down. As it's being pulled down, it's going a bunch of going through a bunch of these pipes, and these pipes will uh, cool it down very quickly and start liquefying. So as you can see here, the liquefying point in this tiny chamber is only just above the actual surface of the chlorine. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm saying. You, this this chamber should be a bit taller. For CO2, however, because it doesn't actually it actually does conduct um, heat, or in this case, cold, a little bit more effectively, um, the condensing point is about midway, just a little bit above midway of the uh, actual chamber itself. So it actually works out fairly well. Um, I mean, in terms of materials, because they, this is a little bit important, most things are made out of wolframite, if you can kind of see here. I know you can't get wheeze warts on top of airflow tiles like this. This is just using the debug mode, but you can have flower pots there, but usually I just use very conductive um, things here. Every in All the insulating pipes are made out of ceramic. The chambers themselves are specifically made of, met uh, of uh, metal tiles, but gold more specifically. The reason for gold, apart from it being a very good conductor of hot and cold, its thermal capacity is not the highest. That's very important because, as you can kind of see, it's kind of obvious here, the liquid um, gas is in contact with the metal tiles, and if the metal tiles are still warm, as when like when you first set, oh, it's turning to night time. Okay, um, but as you first set up this system, and like if you're building this le legitimately, these tiles are going to be like room temperature. So the as the liquid gas uh, starts to condense in these coils, falls to the bottom. If the tile is hot, it'll instantly go back into a gas. And then it'll draw back down when it condenses, instantly turns back into a gas. And you get like a very, very light, you know, from liquid to gas state. And, it, and the gas will just keep bouncing up and down in the chamber until the tile gets to the temperature that it can still maintain uh, its liquid state. And as you can kind of see, if the liquid here is at negative 57.6 degrees, the tile is within 0.1 degree of the same temperature. So gold tiles are, I would say, important. Um, yes, I have many liquid, uh, liquid pumps here. Uh, just to pump out the liquid uh, liquid gas when you desire to. It makes sense to use the uh, uh, the, the smaller ones here, so, either, you know, because you're not really producing a whole lot of... You're not condensing a lot of gas per second. I don't... Sp oh, we've actually run out of... Uh, we've run out of power. Good job, duplicates. You've not been paying attention. Um, but anyway... Although this is actually one nice thing about having a vacuum. Um, the temperature of the of the inside doesn't exactly change a whole lot very quickly. 
uh, if the power goes out. So, you know, because it's a vacuum, everything in here pretty much remains cold and all that. Now, I don't know the sp the, how fast this system runs. I've been only running it with mi with the mini um, the mini pumps here, uh, just, just for testing purposes. And this system is more than capable of uh, uh, condensing 50... Uh, how did you make a mech? It's because no one's cleaning the goddamn toilet, isn't it? You complete and utter moron. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so th this is, these systems are more than capable of um, condensing 50 grams of the respective gas, CO2 or chlorine per second. Um, but I would probably say that this system can handle a little bit f uh, faster of a process. I mean, you can always you can always upscale this. You know, have bigger, co bigger condensing chambers. I would say taller, maybe not as wide. Or, I mean, same width, but higher uh, chambers with uh, more condensing coils, more wheeze warts for the active cooling, because five here is actually more than enough for this system. Um, and then you can start using, a, you know, have like a gas valve to, you know, just increase the flow rate of the actual raw gas you're putting into it. Um, and you'll probably get a very decent result. Um, you could definitely upscale this, but this is a, this is roughly as small as I've made this, this one here. This also seems to be the most successful of the design. Um, and for the most part, yes, it is actually very good. Like I said, I'm not too sure, you know, how practical this would be in a survival sense, but but then again, storing a liquid is a lot easier than storing a gas. For the most part, anyway. <laughs> gas tends to flow everywhere, liquid will do as well, but at least it'll follow at least gravity, and gases, well, gases just mix with themselves, and technically there are different densities of gas. CO2 is like the heaviest, chlorine is like pretty heavy, and then there's like oxygen, and then na natural gas I think is above, wait, is natu no, natural gas is below oxygen, but alright, whatever, you get my point here. So, it's like a long-term method of storing waste gas, or maybe you could you, you could just like pipe out a little, using the pump a little bit of gas, uh, liquid gas, and then uh, like let's just say you had, oh, I don't know, take take a like it was a, like a plant or an animal or something I don't know that required a specific type of atmosphere. Take a little bit of that liquid gas, literally just dump it into the room. Maybe put a space heater next to it. You'll you'll instantly get a, a um you instantly get it back into a gas. And considering how how much physically denser liquids uh, liquid gases are to uh, uh, regular gas in terms of density, yeah, like a couple couple of drops of. Uh, Chlorine gas will probably reduce a metric shit ton of chlorine. So, if you need chlorine in a large amount, then there we go. So anyway, yes. Um, before I lose my voice, because I am technically a little bit ill, um, that is about it. This is just a somewhat compact um, gas condensing unit that really does not require. Well, I mean, there's a bit of setup. Yes, there's a, like there's a lot of ceramics in the insulating pipes here. Although technically these these pipes exist in a vacuum, so it shouldn't matter. But I still made them out of ceramic. You're gonna need a lot of gold for the um the gold tiles and wolframite out of your ass. Uh, not only for the machines here, but um, let me see what was what else was wolfram. Oh yeah, the radium pipes. What I'm talking about. So I'm not sure if that's wolframite's the best here for rad the radium pipes for the cooling, but it works. So I am not complaining. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of this random contraption down below. I mean, have you ever thought about condensing your gases to save space, perhaps? I mean, true, I hadn't thought about it until now, um, or until recently when I started making these condensing units, but since literally this, apart from the setup cost, you just gotta have this one gas pump running at all times to keep things circulating. And that's it. I mean, I could probably do something clever with a, a gas reservoir for slight like, spare hydrogen using uh, like a, a bridge pipe to give it a direction, and then like radium pipes in here uh, where the wheeze warts are to do the cooling, and then the gas canister just exists there to um, have a bit of a reserve. That that idea actually might that idea I just said might be the uh, the answer to maybe a completely zero power uh, unit but regardless this was this was only one, uh, a one gas pump system and doing it like i've just said with the gas pump it's a lot smaller than fitting in a reservoir and a bunch more pipes and all the above so anyway i'm gonna shut up now here uh like i said let me know if you think this random thing down below in the comments uh link to my discord if you want to say hi to me is in the description as always and let me know as well should i continue or maybe make some more of these oxygen not included videos if i could make some kind of weird contraption and i just want to show it off to you guys or maybe something like that i don't know just let me know if, you, if i should continue with this so uh thank you for watching and i'll see you all in the next video